Today I'm going to be talking about one of the cameras I've been using for the last year. What I like about it, what I don't, and whether or not it's a worthwhile investment. I bought the RX10 Mark III about a year ago, ready for our trip to New Zealand. It was a bit of a wild card because I was used to a 24 to 70 and then a 70 to 200. But I figured as I was bringing my A7R along for astrophotography and long exposure, I was only gonna be using the RX in decent light. I thought I'd give it a go. I've had it for 12 months now and I've shot in lots of different conditions, but is it a worthwhile investment for you? It's a pretty big camera and it's a little bit expensive. I think when I bought it, it came in at around about 1,200 pounds, but it's one of the most convenient cameras I've had as a walk around camera. It is still quite a big camera, but it comes in at just over one kilo. So it doesn't add too much weight to your bag. Also, because it's so light, it means that I can take it wherever I go. As long as there's enough light, this will do the job. It's got the full frame equivalent of 24 to 600 millimeters. This is the equivalent to a 25 times zoom, which is an absolutely ridiculous range. I know there are some cameras out there that have even more range, but for a camera with a one inch sensor, this is really good. Now I've always liked picking out details in a landscape and with a 600 millimeter reach, I can pick out whatever I want. You can be stood in front of a massive landscape and first of all, you can get a wide shot and then if there's details, you can pick those out. With my other camera, I'd have to haul around a load of different lenses to get the same range. So it's great just to have it in a small package. I found that if I was shooting with this camera, I would capture more things. So I'd have that range with me, with the camera on the strap on my hip, I'd be able to bring the camera up and take a picture really quickly. Because it's a fixed lens and it goes from a wide to a super zoom, there's no worry about changing lenses or getting dust or anything on the sensor. With my bigger camera, I'd have to faff around changing lenses or I'd actually have to carry two bodies with me, one with a wide and one with a zoom. Most cameras these days come with manual functions, which is great because you can take control of taking the pictures that you want. But some of the cameras still don't give you quick and easy access to the three main settings. These are shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. With this camera, I can have shutter speed on the top dial here. I've mapped ISO to the back dial here. And obviously I've got aperture on the ring at the front. This means that I've got easy and quick access to all three settings. With exposure compensation, it has this dedicated dial on the top. So if you're shooting in P, A, or S mode, you can then very quickly change your exposure. Now there are a few cameras that I've been tempted by. I think a while back I was tempted by the Nikon P900, but it didn't shoot raw. And this is really frustrating because the camera captures the raw information. So I don't know why they don't make it available. When I saw that the RX10 range shot in raw, I was intrigued. And once I saw some of the sample images coming out of the camera and how it could compete with some of the more expensive cameras, that's when I decided to take the plunge. Another feature that I like, which is buried deep within the Sony menu system, still don't understand why they set it out how they do, but one of the other settings is bracketing. When you combine this bracketing with shooting in RAW, it really does extend the dynamic range of this camera. You're basically taking three different shots, one for the dark parts, one for the normal parts, and one for the bright parts. This does take a bit more knowledge in editing, but if you put in that extra work, you can make this camera really shine. It may sound like I'm raving about this camera, but there are a few things that I don't like. The focusing system on this camera is the contrast detect system. This really suffers at the long end of the lens. If what you're looking at is all a similar color, it really struggles with locking on. I have found a way to work around this, but it is a little bit of a pain and I have missed shots. What I tend to do is if it's not locking on to what I wanna take a photograph of, I'll have a look around and see if I can find something that has quite a contrast. So if there's a dark horizon and a bright sky, I'll get the focusing point over that. And it tends to lock onto that. Then I'll press the focus lock button on the side of the lens 
and then take the shot. So I'm locking on focus at something at a similar distance and then taking a photo of what I want. It is a bit of a workaround and it's a bit of a pain, especially if something's happening really quickly in front of you, but I've kind of learned to live with it. They have addressed this issue with the Mark IV, which is the latest model. That has the phase detection focusing system, which is a lot more efficient. On all my cameras, I tend to set back button focusing. This is where you have the focus brought away from the shutter button and onto a button on the back of the camera. Unfortunately, you cannot do that with this camera, which is quite frustrating. Again, there's a workaround by using the focus lock button, but I hope it's something that they put in future models. So to get around not having back button focusing, I'll focus on what I want and then press the focus lock button on the side of the lens. This means that I know that the focus is gonna be exactly the same until I release that button. Recently, I've noticed when you zoom in right to the end of the lens, you get a weird, quite a big vignette. You can see it in this video as I zoom in on a niche climbing this dune. Watch the two sides as he gets to the top. Normally when I'm filming, I don't zoom, but in this instance, Anish was climbing this dune and I wanted to get closer to catch him at the top. You can really see the vignette push in as I zoom in. This isn't great. I hope they sort it out on future models. A Sony menu system is a pain. Everyone talks about it. Everyone complains about it. And it is just a haphazard mess. There are ways around it and I've made a video on it. If you click on the eye in the corner, that'll take you to this video. I tend to use the function button and the custom buttons, and this tends to give me access to everything that I need. The batteries on this camera are tiny, which is great because they don't take up much space, but I go through them so quickly, especially when filming in 4K. So I tend to carry five or six if I need to shoot throughout the whole day. I'm hoping when they bring out the Mark V that they put the newer Z-Type battery in it. That'll be great then, because that'll give it so much power you'll be able to use it for quite a few hours. This is not a massive issue because of the huge range of the zoom, but if you really wanted to shoot some super wide angle shots or like fisheye shots, you can't because you can't change the lens. Overall, I really like this camera. I'll be hanging on to this one for a while. And when the Mark V does come out, I'll probably upgrade to that one. And if Sony's anything to go by, it probably won't be that long. For me, this is my day-to-day -day camera. It's light, so it won't break my back. I have it slung over my shoulder most of the time. When I'm doing a paid job, I'll use my professional cameras. But as a walk around, this really is a great little camera. And that's about it. If you shoot mostly in the day, need a walk around camera, or travel a lot and are limited on baggage, this camera would be really good for you. As always, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And for weekly tutorials, hints and tips in photography, subscribe and turn on notifications. I'll see you in the next one.